Hi guys, I'm here today to do the first part of my Christmas book haul. Now firstly I just want to say that I hope if you celebrate Christmas you enjoyed it, you had a pleasant time, you got through it and survived. I know it can always be a little bit chaotic and full on. I love the day after Boxing Day, has always been my favourite day of the year. And uh, yeah, I had a really nice chill time and I'm hoping to have a few more chill days. I go back to work on the 2nd, which I think is when quite a lot of people who have sort of office based jobs go back to work. And I'm really utilising these days heavily for reading, gaming, chilling, eating and yeah, really enjoying it. So I hope you are too. This first section of the book haul is going to be a few books I bought myself online a few days before Christmas, a little cheeky pre-Christmas treat which I probably shouldn't have done, and then the books I received as gifts for Christmas. And then the second part of the haul is going to be the books I bought myself with some Christmas money. So on Boxing Day evening, after all my family had left, after we'd had a really nice big massive buffet, I lied on the sofa underneath a blanket and bought myself some books online and I'm very excited for them all to arrive. But before they do, I have these ones to talk about. So, as you guys may have noticed over like the history of my channel, if you've watched for a while, I really love independently published books, particularly um, indie presses, uh, indie presses in the US. Um, I just find they have a really amazing output. But they're not stocked in bookshops over here. Even when you go into um, indie bookshops, it's really hard to find um, indie press books from the US in the UK. And so I always have to order them online, but they're super expensive if I order them directly from the publisher. And so I like to do that every now and again because it's really nice to support those publishers. But equally, these books have less reviews online, they're more of a risk because I could spend loads of money on them and not enjoy them. So what I tend to do is, you know, once or twice a year I um, look for when they've gone quite cheap second hand and I take the risk and hope they're in good quality. I took the risk with these ones and they're all in good quality, so I'm pleased. So the first one is An Arrangement of Skin by Anna Journey. Um, this is an essay collection which was published I think in 2018 by Counterpoint Press who put really great books out there. And I don't even know if they are an indie press or not, but anyway, you know, they're not widely available over here in the UK. And I was drawn to this, going to be honest, because of the cover, because I think it's amazing. Um, but then I had a little read about it, it just sounds really amazing. Um, so it says, Sues of antiquity, modern day tattooed pirates and ghost stories are all drawn together with Journey's poetic talent. This is a retrospective that does not alienate with its personal tone. Rather, the reader is invited to reflect on a life's many transitions and how they become part of the self. So yeah, I read the first couple of pages of the first essay, which is about her calling a suicide hotline, and the tone was just on point. I really enjoyed it, so I'm hoping this could be a really great essay collection. And it's very small, so hopefully it won't sit and languish on my shelves for ages. And the next one I've wanted for absolute years and just Again, haven't bought it because of the price, so I finally caved and picked this one up. And this is Horse Flower Bird. Uh, this is a collection of stories by Kate Bernheimer, and this is published by Coffee House Press, who I love. Um, and I love that this is sort of a little um, squarish book. I think it's really cute. And if you don't know, um, Kate Bernheimer writes, I guess, bizarro fiction that is like Amy Bender, but more fairy tale focused. And so I've read one of her other collections, but I don't own it. Um, and I've always wanted to pick this one up as well. They're a really large font and they always have like a little drawing at the start of each story. Um, so, so they're not for everyone, they're quite weird and wacky. Um, but I enjoyed the other collection I read by her and so I've always meant to pick this one up as well. And then another short story collection is Him, Me, Muhammad Ali by Randa Jarrah. Jara. And I've heard not many people talk about this, but the people I have to heard talk about it have really, really loved it. Um, and obviously the cover helps. So this says, this story collection moves seamlessly between realism and a fable, history and the present, capturing the lives of Muslim women and men across myriad geographies and circumstances. And I love magical realism and short stories, as you guys know, but I tend to read them that are really focused on, I guess, sort of British um, fabulism and fairy tales, so I think it'll be interesting um, to read it from a different perspective and hopefully I'll really enjoy this one. And then I have this book. I don't really know how to describe this. This is Cloud and Ashes, um, Three Winter Tales by Greer Gilman. Um, and this is published by Small Beer Press, who are an American indie press that publish sci-fi and fantasy. And um, yeah, there's usually quite a blend with fairy tales and some of their um, fantasy is quite historical. To be honest, I have no idea how to describe this, but I've wanted it for years. So it's three, I guess, novella length stories and this is over 400 pages and it's quite small font and all I know is 
These are, it says, it's a slow whirlwind of language, a button box of words, a mythic playful, an erudite joycy and fable that invites immersion, study, revisitation and delight. I think this is going to be very wordy and I have no idea if I'll enjoy it or not, but I've wanted it for so long and I finally found it at a good price so I took the risk. So let me know if you've read any of these because um, I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about that one or this next one either. This is The Drifts by Tom Vernon and this is published by Coach House Books and um, they're another publisher who I'd really love to read um, more of their books but again they're um, quite expensive to get hold of over here. So um, this is set in a town in north eastern Arkansas, I probably said that wrong, and we find, we follow I think four characters who are moving around this town um, during a blizzard and their stories and it says that these Four stories converge into one violently exquisite chord as cold and harrowing as the blizzard. And yeah, this hardly had any reviews, but I just really liked the sound of it. So yeah, fingers crossed. I also love that cover, though I'm hoping nothing horrible happens to any animals during this blizzard. So fingers crossed. These next ones are the ones I received as gifts for Christmas. So firstly, the lovely Jen got me these two books, and I have already started this one because as soon as I opened it, I was like, this sounds amazing. I read the first page and I was just instantly hooked. So, so beautifully written. So I'm hoping um, to finish this before the year is out. And that is After the Eclipse by Sarah Perry. So this isn't the Sarah Perry that we have probably all heard of on Booktube, the um, British fiction writer. She's from Maine um, and this is a beautiful memoir. It's quite harrowing so, you know, it's not for everybody so I will, you know, um, warn you there there are some upsetting scenes because this is about the fact that um, when Sarah Perry was 12 there was an eclipse um, and she thought that this was sort of a sign that her and her mother were going to have this beautiful rest of their lives together um, and instead um, two days after her mum was brutally murdered um, in the home and Sarah Perry was the sole um, witness to this crime and it follows her um, all these years after because the person who committed the crime wasn't convicted for 12 years. It's beautiful but as I said it is you know upsetting obviously because of the topic it deals with so um, really really glad Jen got me this one this is like a perfect book choice for me. The next one Jen got me is a short story collection and that is Heads of the Coloured People by Nafissa Thompson Spires. I heard about this one earlier in the year and meant to pick it up and then for whatever reason forgot to so I'm really glad to have this particularly because I've been really rubbish at reading short story collections lately um, and I'm hoping to get back into them and having more to pick up will help. So it says, Nafisa Thompson Spies interrogates our supposedly post-racial era. To wicked and devastating effect, she exposes the violence, both external and self-inflicted, that threatens black Americans, no matter their apparent success. Um, so yeah, this is quite different from the short story collections I usually read, because I think this is always going to have an edge of um, dark humour and satire. Um, and I usually go for stuff that's more, I guess, fairy tale and magical realism but it's one that I think sounds really really interesting and I haven't heard many people talk about this one um, so I'm looking forward to um, seeing what it's like so there's that one so the lovely Eleanor got me the next two and I can't remember where I heard this next one recommended but I definitely heard somebody talk about this author on their channel recently so if it was you then say um, so this is Awakening by Stevie Davies so this is a historical novel and it has loads of themes that I adore. So it's set in 1860, which is one year after the publication of The Origin of Species, and it follows two sisters as their world is just racked by science and religion. And I think there's some sort of romances that go on that cause a rift in the sisters' relationship. And from what I read of the first couple of pages, this is rather heavily focused on women and their mental health and how that was dealt with incredibly poorly in this time period. Um, the novel sort of opens with somebody, I believe, in a um, what they would then term as an asylum. So yeah, I think this is going to be a really interesting read. Um, the writing style is really beautiful. It feels a little bit like, um, from the few pages I've read, um, the Sarah Moss historical fiction book. So if you've read them and you know want to know where to go next, um, I feel like this from what I've, the little I've read share similar themes um, so yeah I'm really looking forward to this one. And the next one, um, quite differently, is The Honey Farm by Harriet Olydia Lai. 
Um, so this sounds a little bit cultish and there's quite a lot of cult books that come out and um, that I'm interested in but then I'm like oh you know there's a lot of cult books but this one really drew my eye because it has an environmental aspect. So this is about a group of people who live on a honey farm um, and they decide to um, sort of try and um, live separately from everybody else and they sort of advertise it as this artist's colony um, and then things start to go wrong and we follow this from a young girl called Sylvia's perspective um, and yeah we follow quite closely about her and I think her mother and perhaps um, a lady that one of them becomes close to. I'm unsure, it's quite a long description, um, but I think it's going to be quite beautifully written, quite descriptive and hopefully lots of um, nature focused writing, which I love. So there's that one. And the next one I know will have lots of nature focused writing. This is one of my most anticipated releases of 2018 um, and again I didn't pick it up because it was pricey but towards the end of the year um, I saw it at a lower price online and so I mentioned to Johnny I would very much appreciate if he got it to me for Christmas, hint hint, and so he did. Um, so this is The Wildlands by Abby Jenai. Now I'm not a massive fan of that cover I'm going to be honest but I will forgive the author for that because I have adored both of her books so I loved her short story collection and I also really enjoyed her previous novel The Light Keepers. Um, if you enjoy um, slow moving beautifully described books that have a really really strong focus on the natural world Abby Janai is an author you should be reading. This one sounds like it could be a little bit more fast paced than her previous novel um, because this follows a family during a uh, rather tumultuous period so there is a tornado that ravages a town in Oklahoma I believe and when that happens the older brother disappears Three years later he's never been seen but a bomb goes off and this bomb affects a lab where animals are being tested on. The brother reappears and asks his much younger sister to help him um, you know get these animals out of the lab and also to sort of um, you know make this mad dash to try and fight against the way humans treat animals um, and it's that story and their sort of um, relationship. So it sounds amazing. I am so excited and as I said this was one of my most anticipated releases of the whole year so I don't know why it took me this long to get to it. So yeah that is the last one in this video. So please let me know if you've read any of these or if you have any other rec recommendations for books like these. I'd love to know and also let me know how your Christmas went, if you have these few days off and if so do you just like to chill out and um, you know read and eat food. And yeah, I'd love to know what your plans are for the next few days. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.